Hiya, it's Robin here. Lovely to see you. Now, this photo lives in my house and it helps me to remember. It came from my granny's house when she passed away. She was in her 90s and it helps me remember my gran. It's a photo of her seven boys, uh, my seven uncles. She actually had nine children. It also helps me remember my uncles. So I wonder, who is it in your life that you like to remember? And I wonder if you have any special objects or special places or special ways to remember them. Pause the video to think about these questions. Now this could be hard for some people, so only talk about it if you're really happy to share. There's a famous Bible story about Jesus and his disciples that has led to Christians eating bread and wine as a way of remembering something special. Does anyone know what this is and has anyone seen or been to such a service? In churches, this special meal is called Communion or Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. And it's a way for Christians to remember the sacrifice of Jesus when he died and rose again. So let's watch the story. In that case, we'll be in good company. <laughs> Why are we meeting in secret? Because Jesus is safer here. No one will arrest him at Passover. Arrest him? <laughs> Judas, where have you been? Come on, we're all here. What's Jesus doing? He's thanking God for the bread. He lifts it so high. He always does that. It's his way. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who brings forth bread from the earth. Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Your body? Do this in memory of me. Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood. My blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is the last time I will ever drink wine with you. Master. Until I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father in heaven. In heaven? No! Now, you see that I put on my smartest clothes. I don't do this very often. In fact, I really don't like dressing up smartly at all, but I've made a special effort for you. Can you think about occasions when you dress up smartly or you put on a special uniform? On November the 11th each year, or on the nearest Sunday called Remembrance Sunday, Many millions of people put on their smart clothes or a uniform and take part in services and ceremonies to remember. We remember the sacrifices of the members of the armed forces and civilians in times of war, especially since the First World War. As a Christian, I see there is a link. Jesus gave up his life freely to deal with the darkness and sadness in this world and to bring hope. Many people in wartime have unselfishly given up their lives in so many different ways. And this means that we have a good life now with hope and a future. And I, for one, am very thankful. And that is why I choose to wear a poppy like many millions of others across the world. Some people choose to wear a white poppy 
which represents remembrance for all victims of war, a commitment to peace and challenges any attempt to glamorise or celebrate war. Watch this short video which tells us about how the wearing of the red poppy came about. The poppy. The poppy is a symbol of remembrance, worn every November to commemorate members of the armed forces who gave their lives in war. Its origins go back to the First World War. Amongst the churned up soil and shell holes of the battlefields of the Western Front, poppies would grow even when nothing else could. They would give Canadian doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, inspiration while serving in Ypres in the spring of 1915 after recently losing his friend. He would write the now famous poem in Flanders Fields. The poem would go on to be published in a London-based magazine called Punch. In 1918, in response to McRae's poem, American academic Moena Michael was inspired to make and sell red silk poppies and campaigned to make the poppy a symbol of remembrance to those who had died in the war. The Royal British Legion formed in 1921 and ordered 9 million of these poppies, selling them on the 11th of November that year in support of ex-servicemen and the families of those who had died in the conflict. The poppies sold out immediately and raised a considerable amount of money. The funds went on to be used to help First World War veterans with employment and housing. Because the poppy appeal was so popular, the British Legion set up a poppy factory employing ex-servicemen to produce them. This continues today with the Legion producing millions of poppies each year. When you buy a red poppy, you are supporting the work of the Royal British Legion. Now here's one story of many, many of someone who's been helped by the British Legion. He's a young man called Lyndon, who served in the army very recently. From a very young age, the military was definitely my career choice. So as soon as I left school, that's what I did. And I loved every minute of it. broke my back in four places, broke my arm, broke my finger, broke my jaw. The consequence of that was just having to deal with lots and lots of pain, like quite debilitating pain. The surgeon I'd seen there uh, said to me, you shouldn't be here, you need to go home. And the same day I was on a flight back to the UK. A week prior I was in Afghanistan, a week later I'm not even allowed on a base in the UK and I got sent home and I wasn't allowed to do anything from there. So. My drive has always been to be, a, to be a soldier and that's what I enjoy doing and then to get that taken away from me a second time was like a, like a big hit. You know, I'm a, I'm a fit young lad and I'm broken. Yeah, I didn't, I don't think I coped very well at the time, sorry. <laughs> yeah. The whole time I'd been, um, been off at home, uh, away from work, I'd not done anything because I've got this surgeon saying, oh, you can't do that because it's bad for you and you can't do this. And everything that was coming in was negative. You can't do these things. And after a while, you totally believe it. The coaches that work here, you know, just completely changed my mindset. They changed it from thinking I was pretty useless to suddenly, hang on a minute, there's a lot I still can do. Might be a bit different to what I used to do, but I can still do stuff. I can still do a lot. The Royal British Legion have specialised in helping soldiers for nearly a hundred years um, and they do a good job of it. People get injured and people get sick and without a centre like this, um, which can cater for, for all of that, um, can give people a bit of hope and a bit of direction uh, and become themselves again if, if they've lost their way a little bit. We have two minutes of silence this week and if you're watching this on the 11th of November you'll be joining in with millions of others having a two minute silence today. There are some images on the screen for you to look at but you may prefer just to shut your eyes and be quiet. I find it helpful at this time to thank God for all the people who have suffered in wartime 
and to also pray for peace now and ask him to help me be a peacemaker in my life. This week we have a piece of classical music from 1899. It's called Nimrod and it's written by Edward Elgar. Now this version shows it being played at the National Remembrance Sunday event in 2018 in London. This takes place at the Cenotaph, which is a permanent memorial erected exactly 100 years ago. I'll leave you to watch and listen and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.